welcome everyone to Richard Michael Click's solo exhibition entitled Circling the Skies. My name is Carolyn Goodrich, founder of Art Impact International. Thank you so much for spending your Saturday with us, Juneteenth, actually. And what we're going to do first is I'm going to introduce Richard and and then we're going to just hear a little bit about his background and then we're going to jump into the um i believe it's uh how many 27 pieces that he has on exhibit in the 3d virtual gallery and also you you uh, the attendees will have an opportunity to ask questions to make comments to give him support tell him you love his work or that his work stinks, don't you dare, <laughs> right? And, and then we're just gonna have some fun and we're gonna try not to go over an hour, but if we do, that's okay. Um, so with that being said, I would like to introduce Richard Michael Glick of Chicago, Illinois. Richard, take it away. <laughs> <laughs> Well, first of all, Carolyn, thank you so much. You've been an inspiration. Your intelligence, your hard work, your dedication to artists around the world has really been amazing for me. And to go through this journey with you has really been so impactful. So uh, thank you so much for all your help and visit Carolyn's website. It's a not-for-profit helping artists again. So, um, Kudos to you. Uh, and really, it's Thank been you. so great. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I guess my journey started in the suburbs of Chicago, grew up there, had a great childhood, supportive parents, great sisters, um, and neighbors, wives, uh, friends in my later years that have been very supportive. Um, always been interested in the arts, particularly painting, um, decorative, designing. And so it all kind of started. I went to college in Ohio at Ohio State, then did programs internationally, which helped me grow a lot with learning more about the world and art. And from that, my last quarter of school was in New York. And I thought, well, I'm going to be the next Pablo Picasso. So and then I thought, well, do I really want to suffer? <laughs> and so um, came back to Chicago for a bit and got into the furniture, contract furniture and design field more for commercial things which I had done for many years, family was in that. So, uh, and now I've been transitioning to strictly painting. So um, it's been a big journey for me. And um, hopefully my artwork will shine more than me on this video. Um, my work kind of has to do with we'll call it a space odyssey. It involves shapes, globes, suns, planets, the atmosphere, earth, moons. And uh, again, there's a lot of decoration, a lot of texture to the work. I start out usually painting it one color and then just kind of build from that. Use stencils, um, build colors. Usually there's a minimum of five layers on each painting. So it kind of, when I scrape things off, you get the feel of what's underneath each painting. And um, I've, here we have about 20 some paintings, but I have a lot of children sitting in the storage area. So uh, just waiting for homes. And, <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's pretty much. Sure. What is the average size of your painting? Well, the largest, uh, the ones are 40 by 40 inches. 
Um, then I have a lot of 36 by 36, uh, 30 by 40s, then I get smaller, um, 18 by 18 back there, which matches mm -hmm. my shirt. Uh, <laughs> And then smaller ones when I'm just doing little studies. Uh, I use yeah, like yeah. using a lot of color, but then I get to black and white units just as well. Now, can you tell us as just before we're going to start moving into the gallery, can you talk about circling the skies? Now that's a that's a very nice title. Can you expand on you know, where are you coming from with that? And how the how the artworks in, in general depict that title, that theme? Right. Well, I was really interested in having more of looking at the universe, looking at more at skies, planets, but I wanted to be very abstract and Circles became a big theme. Circles and globes, I'd say. Um, floating, I wanted some floating things, but there's always, except for this coral painting, most paintings have a border. So it sets up areas, breaks up areas a bit. Okay, okay. All right, so what I'm gonna do now then is, again, we will, Share the screen. And we're going to move into, we're going to move into the, oh dear. <laughs> we're going to move into, see if I could get it. To I'm show. glad I'm not doing this. <laughs> yeah, so you see all the windows I have open, right? <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, here we go. So we're gonna start with the page that we have set up. Now, after this gallery talk, this registration button is going to be turned into the, um, you can always come back and view and listen to the playback because this is being recorded. So this is artimpactinternational.org, Richard-Michael-Glick. So this, everything that we cover today is going to be on this page. So this is the hub. These are his, this is a link to the 3D gallery, which I'm going to click on in a minute. These are the videos that were produced for Richard. This is his bio. And then also we have the e-commerce page. So you can purchase the originals and, or you can purchase the um, prints. And I have examples that I'll show you later. That's why I went up to get them. And his exhibit is going to be run all the way through next month, the 7th. Right? It's okay. Yeah, it's not here, but it's at the top of the page. So you can see June 7th to July 7th. And also portions of any of the paintings that are sold does go to Art Impact International. So it's for a good cause. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Richard. So, okay, so now, so now, so you guys can know, I'm gonna click on that image of the gallery, which we call, you know, I love names, contemporary culture shock. <laughs> and <it's, laughs> but isn't it great that we could all see this? You don't have to go to an actual gallery. and Right, right. I mean, that's kind of fun too, but with the COVID, the restrictions, wow. but at least we can be in different locations and still be together at the same time. So, yeah, right. yeah so it's great. It's great. So this is the introduction to the show. It has Richard's name, his background, which Richard is very humble and modest about his, his academia. <laughs> He's been to, he's actually got his BFA from Ohio State, and he also studied overseas in Academia de Bella Arte de Perugia in Italy. I hope I pronounced that all right. That and Cite, <laughs> Cite Internationale Vestaria in Paris. 
and so forth. So here he's exploring and learning, wants you to learn about the cosmos. So we may make fewer mistakes in the future regarding climate change, atomic energy, peace, security, water, and our oceans. So the sole exhibitors for Art Impact International, I request that they have something to do with some of our global challenges that we all face, no matter what country we live in. So just keep that in mind that he really wants to bring consciousness to climate change, atomic energy, peace, security, water, and our ocean. So some of the artworks will reflect this in an abstract way. Right. So we're going to so we're going to enter it now and so you guys can see everything in here, right? Okay. So I'm going to hide. I could show people this is kind of fun, you know, that they're going to appear or they would anyway. So and then these little thumbnails down here, they will direct you to what you want to see. So there are many ways of navigating the 3D gallery. But we're going to start with we're going to start with this image. And let me just put us in full mode. And now I'm going to put it, I'm going to turn it over to you, Richard, so you can talk about this right. piece, which is Magenta Maze. Right. And guys, just so you know, I'm going to say this once. So just so you know, this little box up here, if you if you click on the right side, let me pull this down. It will give you the name, the title, the price. And also, if you want to, some of them will have, um, it should say purchase, and the purchase would go to the e-commerce page. I'll have to change that one. But um, OK, Richard, let me just click that. Please tell us about Magenta Maze. Sure. Uh, Magenta Maze, it's, I believe, 36 by 36 inches. And um, it's like all my paintings has lots of layers, lots of etching, colors coming from behind. It started out as a black and white painting. And then I thought it needed a bit more colorful impact to it. So um, I added the deep tone, red tones. And uh, again, it's about our universe floating planets in the background, it would be stars and the sky, but just in a brighter tone. Um, and you, you have here is the description, you, you, one of the media is ink. Yes. Is the ink component, the dark marks around each of the circles? Is that the, the ink? Circles and even in some of the spaces there's uh, but use ink like, right now. That's all stencils in the back there. Okay. okay. Uh, but in the globes, there would be more probably ink in there. Um, and it um, kind of was going to be a much lighter tones. And I thought it just had to be a brighter feel to it, more powerful, making more of a statement was the idea. Okay. okay. Now, does magenta have any meaning to you other than the, what we usually think of red as being danger zone? Well, yeah, danger zone, but also I like alliteration. So it's called magenta maze. Okay. So that was kind of the reason why I always try to do that in a title, but not always. Okay, okay. And here we have, an, well, let me go this way first because I see another one there. Right. And then we'll and then we'll hit the other. Oops, I have my name here. Oh dear, I'm <laughs> not the one who did this. <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> well, maybe in your thought process it was. Yeah, yeah. The 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 um the platform always puts my name as being the artist, so I can make sure to put the the correct one. And this one, so sorry about that, <laughs> Richard. No problem. Let me, <laughs> okay, let me let me click. Yeah, it's it's beautiful. I love this. Piece, well, all together, right. so 
It's called Stars Above Sedona. It's probably because I've been to Sedona and it's right. absolutely gorgeous there. It's a, I love it. it's a magical place. <laughs> the Red Rock. Place. It's a magical place. And yeah. actually, this is my only painting in the whole series that are earth tones and golds. Um, and actually, there's a little bit of gold leaf in there. And my friend Dennis was nice enough to give me some gold leaf from a woman that passed away that he was close with and I incorporated it into the painting. And um, so a lot of scribbles, a lot of, I wanted to get kind of that ancient kind of feel to it. And um, again, a very earthy kind of desert feel. Mm -hmm. um, so um, actually a little secret, these little triangles in the back are paper towels when I plotted it. <laughs> the tri in the triangles in the back? Right there, right there. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. yeah. But there again, it starts out, there's all different, lots and lots of layers on this, lots of different colors, and then it evolved to more of a warmer tone painting. Mm -hmm. Um, and there are stars in there and globes and it had that Sedona feel where you want on you when you're on a vortex, you feel that energy. Mm, beautiful. And, and the participants or attendees who are here, we're going to, after we finish the paintings on this wall, we'll open it up for any comments or questions for this wall, but just to get through the images we're going to continue so this is a this is very beautiful richard talk about scarlet skies again we have some more alliteration um actually this is kind of my take on a mark rothko type of painting mm -hmm. uh, painting but then again when you go back there are little circles in there it's a bright sky, a lot of scratches, etchings. Um, so you get to see all that free kind of association when I was doing it. And then oh, the sky, okay. you get the blue right. of a regular sky. And then the stencil is at the, towards the bottom here. Yeah, yeah, there's, there's actually, even in layers before that, there's lots of stencils, but oh, I cut okay. over it too. Okay. Okay. And then we get a little pink on the top and just, um, again, kind of my take on a Rothko. Right. Um, kind of, if anyone saw it, the play that read, which was great about it, his life. Um, and uh, so that was my interpretation, but to give it a little more energy for me, right. scratches that were going on. Right. Yeah. When I looked at it, I thought of Rothko as well. Right. But it's it you still put your own stamp on that. Right. Correct. Now this one, which is sold, but we have it available as print. This is well, such right. a gorgeous piece. Yeah. Um, enchanting gardens. Right. There is actually two of them. There's, and they're both with great friends in New York. Oh, okay. And um, it's actually, for me, everyone's version is gonna be something different. It was about my time in Fire Island in the 70s and the beautiful beaches and flowers. And so that's kind of what I was referring to. And then the blue skies at the top, the teal, or it even could where, be- where is, where is Fire Island for those here that don't know where that Fire is? Island is off of New York City and uh, takes, it's a journey to get there. But once you're there, it's the most beautiful place because there are no cars, no bicycles, you have to walk. It's a mm -hmm. sandbar actually. And, oh, okay. And so you have it, to take a ferry to get there? Yes, ferry mm -hmm. to get there or a seaplane. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. So it's, that's what, for me, that's what it bring, conjures up for me. Wow, but for other people, it may just bring up another beautiful 
time or space in their lives. Yeah, it's, it is, it reflects, it does reflect beauty and serenity. Uh-huh. And how about the one below, which is planet power? Right, planet power, to me, that's one of the more soothing paintings that I did of this series, of uh, these planet series. Um, again, it, pro- it started out as a blue painting and then with the different layers that I put on and the planets or could be flowers, um, that's spray paint. Mm -hmm. And I put a little circle and spray within it. Then I take, um, I just do some etching around it to give it more of a kind of movement, has to give it some movement to the picture. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm curious about that you have 16 planets here, if it's called planet power, is is 16, I I know you like squares, so I understand 16, but is four by four, is that meaningful to you? Or it just happens to be, that's what you did. It probably brings up more my decorative design background that I wanted something that just kind of was in line, but wasn't too structured. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, Um, I think we did finish this wall. So let's open it up real quick to our attendees. So guys, if you have a question or a comment or any insights or how do these, these five paintings so far, how do they strike you? Um, what I love about our gallery talks is that it really is interactive and it's not only for your enjoyment, but also for the artists, for his, to for understand to how other, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. Uh, so please guys, I'm going to, um, Carolyn, ask- I have two questions. Okay, this is Helen. Okay, hi, Helen. <laughs> How are you? Great. Richard, I, I love your work. It's very interesting. Uh, I have two questions. Do you use, how, how do you use the gel? Is it for texture? Yeah, more texture, more oh. than sometimes I just build it up, sometimes just let it go and make it a little more translucent. Right. And the other question is your framing is very interesting. Are you painting on panels and then putting them on or how, how, how are they framed? Well, you have to thank Carolyn for that. All my work <laughs> is done on canvas and by technology, Carolyn has put it white frames on each one right. of these. Paintings. Oh, so right. they're not actually framed that yeah. way. It's just oh. virtual. What I actually do. Yes, it's most, virtual. Okay. Uh, on most paintings, I paint all the edges black. So if someone doesn't want a frame, there's a black edge that so looks neat and it looks sometimes, you know, framing things get costly or. But are they on panels or does each of those have a cradle? What, no. what is the depth of the cradle? Well, they're all canvas, yeah. It's all they're, canvas. Pardon it's, me? They're all canvas paintings. Uh, okay. Canvas, canvases or canvas board. And usually the thickness of the canvas is maybe one and a half inches or so. Uh, okay. Mm-hmm. So they're but, pretty deep, yeah. Yeah. But I love the richness of your colors. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Richard. Hi. Uh, your paintings are very beautiful and very expressive. Thank you for sharing with us. Uh, I have a question from you. That um, are your paintings uh, based on any scientific fact or knowledge or uh, these are just your personal feelings or observations or beliefs? Um, Basically, it's mostly just creating what's my feelings. uh, My feelings are my experience expressing something on the canvas. Um, I am very interested in the universe and our planet, certainly making it more green, more healthy. Um, So I hope that brings some light to the paintings. Yeah, 
Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I, I think also what Jonas is pointing toward is the mathematical side of it. Are there any mathematical, um, is that right, Jonas? Mm -hmm. You were asking when you say scientific, you also included math? Um, because uh, in painting, we have a kind of classification. It says some paintings are uh, more subjective or sometimes objective. Uh, you know, um, abstract paintings are mostly subjective. Uh, and I see your paintings are mostly abstract, but uh, I, I see um, you use kind of, uh, you know, you're watching universe, planet, and uh, it refers to something uh, other than um, our inner world. That's why I ask you about the, uh, the scientific facts. And thank you, that was a good answer. Thank you. Hey Richard, it's Chad. Um, hey, Chad. hey, how are you? <laughs> good. Chad is a great. If you ever need a website person, he's great. <laughs> but he's, he's hiding from us. We don't see his face. Chad, where's Sorry. your video? That's yeah, okay. my video has been having a little bit of problem this morning, so I apologize. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Richard okay. knows what I look like, right? So, okay. no, Richard, I wanted to say, you know what, I've seen your work for a few years now, yeah. and I, you know what, it's so interesting to hear you talk about it. Um, I, I just, the stories behind it, your inspiration that you were thinking while you were putting it together, I just wanted to share that this, this is really an interesting form, and I'm enjoying it quite a bit. So, Please, as you go along, I, I'd love to hear the stories and 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 some of the history behind your work. It's it's really cool. I'm enjoying it a lot. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. For sure. Must be hot in Arizona. <laughs> you know what? I kind of wanted to say, yeah, 116 here in Arizona oh, when you were talking about Sedona. I'm like, Sedona wow. sounds nice and cool. <laughs> <laughs> wow. My goodness. Well, thank you, Chad, for coming and, and sharing and supporting Richard. I'm sure he appreciates that. Absolutely. Um, so unless there are any other comments, real quick, let us continue. I have a comment. Hello. Yes, please. Hi, Richard. Nice to meet you. Hi. Hi my name is Clarence. I'm from, uh, well, I'm in Cambridge, Massachusetts. This is oh. the first time actually uh, joining the gallery, the, uh, the exhibition virtually. I wanted to know uh, what was your inspiration or what is your inspiration when you're actually painting? The theme of your collection is awesome. It reminds me, I have a music background. It reminds me of a composer by the name of Gustav Holtz. I'm not sure if you're familiar with him, but uh, he actually created the planets, which was <laughs> primarily the inspiration for John Williams who created Star Wars theme. Oh, wow. Yeah, wow. so he yeah. goes through all of the planets and all of them have a title. Um, and the works were from like 1914 through like 1921 or something like this. Right. So I wanted to know when you were painting, where do you draw your inspiration? Do you play music in the background? Like how does each concept for each piece come to you? Uh, maybe you could share that. Yeah, um, actually, um, I lived in Boston for, for a while. So that's uh -huh. nice to hear that you're from that area. <laughs> My wife's I love Boston shirt here. She's <laughs> <laughs> thank you honey, for the uh, for the ad. <laughs> Actually music has a big influence on my work and I do listen to music all the time. Um, probably more when I'm listening to music it's more I want something that has a lot of oldness to it. So it's I want something kind of lots of lots of strong music, but I do, uh, music is really, and there's a painting further on that really has a lot to do with kind of a musical elements to it. So, awesome. All right. but I do All right. start with a painting and it's just kind of like a jigsaw puzzle. I start it, I'm not hundred percent sure where it's gonna go. I kind of have an idea and then sometimes uh, it I'm takes, going to the, um, takes on the nature of its own. That's awesome. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. That's that's great. I, I look forward to hearing about seeing the other piece that you just right. mentioned too. Great. Thanks, Richard. Thank you, Clarence, for that question. Thank you. That's really good. Okay, let's continue. Um, we're at Planet Parade. 
<laughs> and Again, this is the first right. one that, that has like this beautiful emerald green in it. Can you talk about the Planet Parade? Right. Um, this one again, um, I want to have more of a flowing watercolor feel to it, even though there are no watercolors. And um, what this one for me, the bottom, there's always in a lot of my paintings a border. So the base portion is where there's a border and that would probably be the land and above are the stars and the planets. Um, as you see, there are stencils in the background, but I wanted to keep this one a little bit more watery kind of flowing feel to it. But then there is that border, that line that kind of breaks it off. And um, wasn't always so sure if that's something about me or just the painting. Got it. Mm -hmm. Great. This one is beyond our reach, blue. Right, and there's beyond our reach blue and there's beyond our reach fuchsia. And um, this is uh, planets and there's, this really is about texture and trying to show kind of that earth, wind quality, atmospheric quality to the painting. Again, there are borders that break it up. Okay. And um, there's a little edges, a lot of edge details are sometimes important to me at the bottom there, right there too. Okay, oops, we went the wrong way. Let's click at the bottom here so you could see, <clears throat> see it better. Yeah. Right, so that that's kind of, there's always those little details that I put in Mm -hmm. that um, kind of like, and probably that's more of a decorative kind of design thing that I do. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I, I, my background, I, I studied a lot of different types of art and always I've, I was told by the professors about when you have lines like this, in, in fine art anyway, one of the reasons, not that it's your reason, I'm just saying right. that it's just to give a end to something, but you have made an end and you've also said, we're not going to end. We're going to keep going. <laughs> so, <laughs> so for me, that's, that was what goes through my mind. So I like the fact that there's not an end because you do enjoy motion depicting motion, especially of the right. of nature. So you include that in the depictions in your artwork. So for me, the, the edges speak to going against there having to be borders. Right. They, they can be, but you know, it, it's just there for looking but there's there's never really a stop there's always a continuation oh, no. right yeah did somebody else have something i thought i heard a voice back there just then. <laughs> okay we're going to continue with this one and this one is lost in the universe. Right. And um, this one actually was one of my earlier pieces and one that I really like. Um, I love the textures, um, which there's a lot of, but particularly the green portion of it. Um, it just kind of it just, there's the stars on one side, the earth, the green, and then the planet in the middle and just the skies. And uh, again, lots and lots of layers and um, building up the paints. So, um, but it was kind of a story of sky, earth, 
stars, but turned it around. Mm -hmm. As opposed to having the green on the bottom, I put it on the side. Okay. And for me, I don't know if anyone else, some of my work, I always try to put this kind of Asian feel to it, that it's, there's a lot going on, but I try to keep it simple in terms of shapes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sort of quasi-minimal, right? Right. Yeah. And then this one is the last one for this wall. Right. This one is the Divided skies and um, this has got, this is a collage. This has actually paint, ink, stencils and paper. And um, again, there's parts that break it up. And this is, there's other paintings I have, which is kind of a nod to De Deben Korn, his work. Okay. Um, and um, I kind of liked the colors. I hadn't worked so much in the purple tones and I enjoyed the lavenders. Mm -hmm. um, but it's kind of being expressive yet contained. Mm -hmm. I kind of did this painting during the elections. <laughs> so wow. Divided Skies is why I called it that. <laughs> okay. Wow. Uh, this area is very, very curious. You have the darks and it spreads out to the little circles here. That's really fine work. <clears throat> very beautiful. It's like a visual connection with the layers that really works. Yeah, and the, the coloration maybe is a little bit more Maybe, and there's another painting, more of a Monet kind of. Yeah. Uh oh. <laughs> Whose doggy is that? <laughs> he either wants to come in or go out. <laughs> okay, so um, does anyone have any comments with these four before we continue? You can unmute yourself. I just have one question. No, can yes. you hear me? Yes, uh, some of your stencils are, are very different. Do you make your own stencils? No, I do not, oh. actually. Oh. I go around and I go everywhere to find interesting <laughs> kind of stencils that I could find. I go to hardware stores. Yeah, they're, they're very interesting. I like them. Uh, I, I really try to search for just kind of crazy things that may work. Oh. If they don't, that's okay, too. <laughs> Richard, Mark here. Hi, Mark. Hey, I just got to say, so far, I just am really getting, I love your work, love your work. and you. I'm really getting an appreciation for a series of paintings. Uh, personally, I've never done that. I always tend to work, you know, on a unique piece at a time, but your style is so evident across the spectrum of paintings that we've seen so far. Uh, super creative, love all the texture, uh, and you, you just have a mastery of tonal values. I just love your palette, and I just, not only do I like the imagery, but uh, it just evokes a sense of calm for me when I look at your work, uh, and has a lot to do with your palette and tones. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, probably we're going to be going to some other ones that are going to be um, I do a runway series, so that's going to be a little bit different. Mm -hmm. We get to that, but it still brings in some of that feel too. And Carolyn, I think the way you've hung the show virtually has hey, amazing. Amazing. been <laughs> yeah. amazing. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. I, I, every part of a production for an artist, yeah. I take great care. I, I mm -hmm. always imagine this is my artwork how mm -hmm. would I like it to look? What makes sense? Right. And I also, when I paint, because I'm a painter too, obviously, but I paint, I don't listen to music. The, the actual colors are music to me. So mm. it's sort of like synesthesia where I see the colors, but I hear them. 
And so even when I hang the show, mm -hmm. I take the colors as notes in a song, wow. right? So if, if, if they come together like this wall here, right. for me, this is a little part of a song. You see mm -hmm. how the dark's here and then it's there and then it's there and then it's a mm -hmm. little bit there and then the blue is here and then the pink but they that they, they have something coming together with them so right so curating you know i i never thought i was a curator but really th these titles and names that we give each other is just to communicate the specific action that we're doing at the time so curating i guess it's it's making sure that the work gels together mm -hmm. in a yeah. reasonable way right. right so so i really do study yeah. deeply it's very evident yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank you i don't like slapdash you guys know that right <laughs> so so every piece that you guys send to me i'm like oh wow or <laughs> no this can't be in the show because it won't fit Hmm. It, it'll be like the outliner and it will disturb the the song right mm -hmm. so what gets in and and then the artists themselves like richard he sent me these and you know, ev everything got in but i made sure that they came together on their own wall mm -hmm. right so it, it it it's a labor of love for me honestly honestly well thank you for that <laughs> I have a question. You are welcome. You are welcome. <laughs> all of you, all of you are welcome. Okay, so this wall has four pieces. You see how it leads in. So let's let's go a little faster. Let's see what time we got here. There was one more question. Oh yes, please. I wanted to ask. Um, first of all, the paintings are beautiful, I, and thank I agree the palette is amazing. Oh, uh, thank you. And uh, so my question would be technical, like how long does it take you to paint a masterpiece like this? Like, Well, it really depends on the piece and how um, uh, a lot of them, I would say I start on them and it's probably about maybe a week that I'm working on them because there's different layers when I'm doing one, I may start on another one just because I have to wait till something dries and go back to it. So I would say on the bigger ones, probably a week. Thank you. Thank you. And a lot of these sizes are averaging about three feet by three feet. Correct. Average. Later on, you get to some bigger ones. Right, right. Um, so this one is Celestial Reflections. Right, I'm gonna. Yes. And this one here is, let, let me just make it smaller. This one is Gardens of Light Blue Skies. Beautiful, look at the, the different stencils and patterns you have here. Beautiful, right. I didn't mean to go go too fast, yeah, no, but no, I just. I mean, yeah, that's yeah, fine. okay, <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then this one, oh my goodness, look at this one. This is the fuchsia beyond our reach fuchsia. Yeah, right, yes. Right. Look at all the little yellow dots. And the, what I love uh, here is that they're not like, they're not yeah. constricted. They're all gestural. Right, it's all expressive. Inside. It's all expressive. Yeah, yeah. And there's but lots of things have, in that one. Yeah, you and have again, the, the bottom. There's the the stripe idea too. Right, <laughs> right, <laughs> right. So you have different different um, thicknesses of the lines. You have a right. thicker one here, and you have a thinner one here. You have another thin one here, right. and then if you count the top bar is a line. That's a really line. But when you you zoom in, you see that it has its own texture. Life it has a lot of texture. It has it. its own life. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So the so that's one way we can call these quite lively pieces. And here, this diptych, which which isn't a diptych, I keep yeah. thinking it's, but it's not. And this um, one, the gentleman from Cambridge, this one to me had more of a musical vibe to it. Um, 
it's a painting 36 by 36 divided in half. And then I do vertical on one side, horizontal on the other. But it, I think it's very expressive, but also it has kind of a musical feel to it for me. Um, yeah, I, I, I definitely understand what you mean. Uh, it, it, it has a dynamic to it. Um, you know, I, one of the things that I've noticed throughout um, uh, a lot of the pieces, which is, is, is so powerful, is jumping out to me, that this, it seems as if the perspective is looking down. And uh, I think it's, it, 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 it's so amazing from, with, with the theme being the universe and the skies, but it has to me like this godly perspective. So like some of the others with the planets, like when I see it, it's as if I'm the creator. Oh, nice. so it's like, yeah, so I, I didn't know if anyone else that jumps out. But every time I see like, you know, the paintings, it's from the perspective of it's, it, everything looks small. Does that make sense? So mm -hmm. when you think of the planets and everything and creating it, you know, if, if, if you, you know, into the creator, this kind of idea, then yeah, it would look small. And it's like, it really brings you into the perspective of getting lost in that and what that looks like one of the pieces before. But, uh, and it does have this continuum of, uh, musical movement as you were saying so i, I feel that as well it's, it's, it's brilliant I, I love it thank you so much thank you yeah richard i, th I think he just called you a god <laughs> <laughs> every every artist every artist <laughs> i second that well you know what when you're creating something you do have you are creating something so right right <laughs> so. right you know, one of my favorite Bible verses, which isn't in the Bible anymore, it says, you know, that God is within you. Mm -hmm. God is within you. It's in Luke. It's not there anymore. I thought that was one of the most mm -hmm. powerful, self-empowering messages mm -hmm. of Christianity, but they took it out. I say they. I don't know who rewrote it. Why did they take that out? Yeah, but I, I, I think it just has to do with propaganda and you're not really, anyway, let me not start. You can with always that. put it back in. You can always put it back in. I, 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 after that, I, I hardly read it anymore. It's like, well, I don't know what else they took out because in, in, you know, junior high, studying mm -hmm. the Bible, that's one, one that I studied. Mm -hmm. on. I'm like, oh, man. So yeah. I don't, but you know, you can always keep those old Bibles, but like I said, and all the Bibles you come into, just write it back in there. Right. You have that. You have I that. Can't find, I can't find one Bible now that it's there. It's gone. Mm -hmm. Gone. And so. also from that, that same perspective of studying both biblical and mythological. Because, like, you know, also in, in high school, too, we studied, like, Greek mythology. And, you know, mm -hmm. it's like I was very much into the fan and fantasy and this mm -hmm. kind of thing, too. So, like, all those elements, I just I feel like it just comes together. Obviously from the my interpretation but of course whatever the expression was but that's what i you know that's what it was but claudia he he, he started it he started saying the god stuff <laughs> okay. okay thank you that's great it's awesome and, and that's actually he i think he's using his his wife's uh uh laptop because his his name is mark right mark oh okay Sorry. right right so, yeah uh, Mark, you, you, yeah. for, for your name, you, you have Claudia there. So. Oh, that is my wife. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's interesting. I didn't notice. Yeah, that. yeah. No worries. You know, yeah, yeah. Here, here in Cambridge, you know, like, uh, you, you don't know. You have to have the pronouns and stuff. So, right. Right. <laughs> I'm not sure why that happened. <laughs> Richard, Richard, can you talk about Peace Flight? This is one of the featured paintings that right. you wanted us to really talk about right. here. And this was a very personal painting for me. Actually, it's a collage. Mm. Um, and it was a friend, a childhood friend, who passed away um, of cancer. And she had a long fight with it. But my sister from California sent, was very close with this woman sent me a picture of her with the peace sign. And so I took that and made it three images of her. And it was kind of her floating. Uh, I wanted to be a happy situation. You did. You did. Hence the pink, right? Right. Yeah. And just the white. And, and I kind of wanted to blur, make everything just 
not look, you know, like so or anything like that. But have a, have a kind of a kind of a flowing kind of quality to it. Mm -hmm. Richard, it's Toby. Hi, Toby. Uh -huh. One of my favorites. I love it. Oh, thank you. I really do. Toby's a childhood friend. Oh, okay. I, also an artist. And I just wanted to comment. It, uh, somebody said something about how your artwork reflects um, calmness. Well, it certainly reflects your personality, Richard. I mean, you know, um, so that's, I think that's what you're seeing, truthfully, oh. you know, in all of your art. I love it. Thank you. I think it's interesting that this have picture is, am I allowed to talk now? I'm sorry. Yes. No, you go ahead. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, it's so different because you actually feature, it's representational. Yeah, well, it's figurative, my first figurative painting. But it's still one. your style. You, yeah. can, you can tell it's a Richard Glick mm -hmm. painting yeah. mm -hmm. and super mm -hmm. effective. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. that that woman would be uh, very honored by your painting. Mm -hmm. Most definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what I'm seeing, and one thing I appreciate in your work, I'm seeing how you're using the, your, your, your perimeters and how you blend in that into the whole space and it also defines the lightness and the darkness and gives more dimension right to what I to the rest of the of the painting and it just seems to ah bring it bring it into a another you know we're talking about you know two dimensional things but you're making it three and four dimensional huh. thank you yes and it looks like she has halos around her head yes that yes, was yes. that was very intentional Oh, yeah. Wow. Okay. That's very intentional. Lovely. Wow. Gorgeous. 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 Uh, I think there was something under it. There is. There? Right. Because I like. Yeah. That. Okay. Oh. I like this that one. Is very, very, very peaceful. Yeah, that's right here. <laughs> Beautiful. Because that, to me, is looking at like the water, ocean. Why? And it's. <laughs> Again, yeah. it's a lot of layers and texture, but I wanted that water color. And movement. Right. Yes, the movement to it, correct. And um, so, um, you know, just that same kind of quality that kind of not knowing if we're, if it's water, sky, you know, just breaking up with the border with a little bit of pink. Or it could look like frozen ice, you know. Mm -hmm. We have that in Chicago. <laughs> I was just going to say, Richard, that think that makes me think of Chicago right there. Looking at this one, <laughs> oh really? It it looks like to me the planets are taking a swim. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love that one. Oh, great, gorgeous, gorgeous, and that's that's eighteen by eighteen. That is wow. eighteen by eighteen, correct? Wow. We, Richard, remember, guys. A, yeah. I'm sorry. Go, go, ahead, go ahead. Just a real technical question. You know, I just love these layers that you get and the translucent quality you, you have. Do, are you using mediums with this to thin oh, your paints or? Just basically sprays, spray paint, acrylics, yeah. inks, and just different levels of, you know, watering down. Yeah. And some gels, but that's really, that's it. It's just so mm -hmm. subtle, so effective. Yeah. Incredible, incredible. Yeah. Beautiful, gorgeous, gorgeous. Very pleasing. Thank you. Yes. So this one is circling above mm. blue skies. Right, and this is kind of my runway, starts with some of the runway ideas of stripes going in angles and each, there's a lot of layers on the edges edges are kind of important to me and um, kind of has for me a little bit of Matisse type tones, colors, mm. um, which he was a decorative type of artist as well. Um, a genius, but uh, so, um, and what I used in some of these um, to make stencils are hula hoops. When you were asking about mm. what I get, how I do that, some of these will have hula hoops in them. 
did you say hula hoops? Hula hoops, yeah. Yeah. Hula hoops, the ones that you you so go you when you were a kid, right? Yeah, no, oh man. wow. You could put them together, you could take them apart, and I'd right. and okay. those, use those as stencils a lot because I wow. like the circular. These, yeah. and, and these here almost look like fingerprints, almost, not yeah. quite. Yeah. But from but at first glance, I, I think of a, a thumbprint or a oh. fingerprint. But I know it's not, but it just kind of feels like it. More textural type of yeah. circles yeah. in the sky type of idea. And this is the one that you're that's right next to you right that now, is, yeah, coral yeah. cluster. Right. And right. Um, that again, stencils, acrylics, sprays, gels, inks, a lot of scratches. Mm -hmm to give that textural quality. There are no borders on that one. <laughs> right. <laughs> and this one, beautiful. My goodness, look at this. That's Very red runway. Yeah. And that's kind of getting more to the runway idea. Mm -hmm. And my more contemporary take on a deep and corn right. type of painting. Mm -hmm. um, but what's nice about this is it's really built up. If you saw it in person, there's the layers are and the paper and all that just makes it probably pretty effective for me at least. Right. And I believe breaking up that red, which is very strong, but you've broken it up with these ochre lines, which are just right. brilliant, really nice. Thank you. One question, Sandy. This is very glazy. How do you get that glaze effect? That putting some. Um, I do use effect. some. I do use a little bit of a lacquer type element sometimes on these to give them more shine. A lot of times I don't want it to be too shiny on paintings, too lacquered. Yeah. But this one probably has some of that on there. Beautiful. Yeah. Okay. I got you. So we finished with that wall and I'm going to keep going guys. And then at the end, we can have a big talk about everything. <laughs> How's that? Okay. This wall, I just want to show you the whole wall. This one here, what we're going to talk about. So Richard, can you talk about this group? If the, right. Because the colors are all, you know. Right, they're all the dark. Yeah. And the first two, and then maybe the third one, is more of the runway series. And uh, my friend, and um, who also deals with my website and is a design guru, did a great, he put a David Bowie image in front of the one runway here, eggplant sky. And it was more about, um, actually it had a music thought to me. And um, again, we're doing the same kind of idea of layers and peeling away and seeing what's in the background. Mm -hmm. So you get to see all the different scratches and textures and... Mm -hmm. Beautiful. And there are actually hula hoops in that one too. <laughs> wow. Oh yeah, from a distance you can almost yeah, see it. Yeah. Right. yeah. And then this one in green. And that's another kind of modern take on a deep and corn, but I don't know if it's sky or fields. Mm -hmm. And um I wanted to bring a little green in there too. Yeah, yeah, I love the green. And this one is really, this is the hula hoop idea, but this is trying to be a little more free form and flowing. Okay. Things go as they come and a little mm -hmm. more dripping. And these are more of your larger size pieces? Yeah, these are all 40 by 40. This one's 36 by 36, Disco Universe is the last one in that group. And that started out actually as a red painting. And um, it's all dots. 
so we're going to the pointillism idea and um, then textures. And actually in the big sphere, if that's earth, there's stencils kind of has like, because it was disco seventies for me in New York where I lived, a lot of drug things going on there. And um, so it's all, that took, that took a long time. <laughs> I was just about to say. <laughs> that took a long time. I was just about to say, my goodness, my goodness. Yeah. Beautiful, though, beautiful. It shows it. It shows the dedication to this piece of patience. Yes. And just, you know, getting her done. Right. Nice and neat. For but me, can... more electric, but a lot of people say maybe it's more serene. I mm. don't know. Uh, and the background, of course, is the the earth, the green, and the, the muddy green tones. Mm -hmm. yeah, I like the little coronas you have around the orbs. Yeah. Yes. Great. I think we might have one more wall, and then we can okay. open it up to... Let me just make sure, like this little one at the edge yeah, here. We got that. Yeah. We did. We this yeah. one here on this. Yeah, we got all that. We got these. Okay, great. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We got we didn't get this wall. Oh no, we didn't get that one. Okay. Okay, so this one. Talk about this group here. Okay, um, the one to the right is called Flying Fruit, mm -hmm. and it's my ode to Cezanne, his fruit pieces, but they're flying, they're in space. <laughs> it could be planets, it could be the sun and stars, but for me it was kind of, when I saw it, it was kind of like free floating fruits. <laughs> And to very textural, again, that's done with papers, inks, paint, spray paint. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's somewhat expressive for me. Mm -hmm. it, but, it reminds me a bit of avocado. <laughs> 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 I think of avocado, especially the one towards the bottom right. Right. I love avocado, just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> You see how people bring their own minds All to art. That's right. Yeah. That's right. That's good. That's, That's great. Right. That's what it should be. And then this one here, which is Sky Highway. Right. And that's kind of um, that same idea of having a runway type of idea and kind of reminded me when I was doing George Jetson. Oh, yeah. It had that kind of sense. <laughs> Kind yeah, of sexy yeah. vibe to it for me, yeah. Uh, yeah. but the background is the sky, and um, but you know everyone may read it differently. Yeah, and the the lavender color here is just perfect, mm -hmm. beautiful. It's a very oh, good balance, right. very good balance with the the blue colors. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, and then we have the yellow one, and that's Sungate. And that one, and actual, it's actually even brighter in real life. And the nice thing about it for me, it kind of had this Versace feel to it. Oh. And very Roman, ancient Rome. Um, I could kind of see it like in the 80s Versace advertisements. Mm -hmm. um, and again, there are borders and grids and circles and spheres and silvers and yellows. So, and even and on the bottom, there's a little border. And you do have the honeycomb stencil here. Yeah. So I thought, yeah. I thought that had to do with honey. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And no, these... silver. this has more silver than it. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. And again, the border on the bottom. Right. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. I would kind of love to see that on a, 
Anna, I'd like to see I that. Think uh, I think I think somebody is um, having two speakers because there's a reverberation sound when you speak. Okay. So I'm not sure. Okay. Well, we could go on. Okay. And then we're coming to the circling above sage skies and it's got that runway idea mm -hmm. and a lot of layers. Mm -hmm. And I love the borders on this one as well. You have a different one at the top as you have on the bottom, which right. is perfect. You, again, the feeling of motion. Right, a lot of motion. Yeah, because if they were both the same, it would be more static. Right. Yeah. Again, the hula hoops. <laughs> yeah, those those hula hoops. I love the hula hoops. They want me to want a hula hoop. Yeah. Okay. And this is Claude's pond. It's kind of a my take on a Claude Monet water lily oh, painting. Okay. And um, so I want it to be very light, kind of a water color feel to it, mm -hmm. water feeling, some texture to it, and uh, more stencil, a lot of stencils on this one. Mm -hmm. Wow. And the teals and the lavenders and silvers and mm -hmm. whites. All right. I think we... We're done now. Yeah. Yeah, I think we, we've covered everybody. Um, and let me just, let me just pick one here. Let me just pick. I'm not sure. I wanted to show everyone... Um, each, each of these pieces are connected with the um, e-commerce page. I'm not sure if I'm, what's happened to all of them, but because they all are saying inquire, probably by tonight, they'll all also say buy. So if you want to buy anything, it's easy for you to part with your money <laughs> <laughs> right and um or just look and enjoy yeah yeah or just look you know but let's open it up to everyone to talk about the entire piece and and guys let me know if, if there is one particular piece you wanted to talk about um and we'll zoom in on that one so please you can unmute yourself and I will, um, so we can all kind of see each other. I, I want to still share the, the screen so we can still see the artwork. So does anybody have any questions or comments that they were just waiting to say? <laughs> <laughs> I do have something, if that's OK. If you go to Disco Universe, so I'll be honest, I was looking ahead, Richard. And so with the mindset of what you were saying about earth and, um, you know, trying to repair, uh, I don't know, this one just, it spoke to me. I, I looked at the circle as being earth and it almost looked like band-aids on it. And then the red part on top of it kind of made it seem like, you know, global warming. Yeah. So yeah. like for me, this really spoke to me, like as I was looking ahead before you actually spoke about it, this one, right. I think is probably one of the most interesting ones to me. I, I absolutely love this one. This is fantastic, but that's well, kind of how I saw it. A little bit different, um, but that's yeah. how I saw it. It looked like Band-Aids to me, uh, saying the earth needs repair. It needs, yeah. it needs some TLC. <laughs> yes, yes. I and see those Band-Aids now. Yeah, <laughs> everyone has a different you know, view when they look at something. And actually on my Instagram page, this was one of my most liked paintings. Okay. And I was kind of surprised, but this one really was way up there. Wow. wow. So um, mm -hmm. uh, it, that's interesting that it, you know. Yes, yes, it, yes. You know, but yeah, I say overall, from what I've seen, and this is an introduction, Charles Crawford here in DC. Everything I see, it seems like you're very introspective and have such a, a vast spatial understanding. Thank you. Hey, thank you. 
Mm -hmm. Appreciate that. That's an awesome show, Richard. Great body of work. I'm Thank curious, what, what's the time span, uh, like when these paintings were done? What, 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 we, from what years to what years? Okay. From November 15th, 2019 hmm. to now. To now, yeah. yeah. So my next question then would be, is where do you see yourself going next with uh, content, style? What, what are you thinking, Richard? Well, I want to continue doing these kind of things on paints. I'd like to kind of even do maybe plates, ceramics. Hmm. Um, like to get into um, maybe more like when I say ceramics and things like a Picasso type of plates that he did, mm -hmm. um, 2021 version. So, but keep on painting, keep on doing what I've been doing, um, just expanding on it. Maybe. Yeah. Beautiful. Do we have any other comments? I'm, I'm, help, I'm helping you guys walk around <laughs> yeah. the gallery. So, <laughs> well, everyone probably wants to get out and enjoy the day here. And um, right, right, right. It's beautiful, and some people I think are in Europe that I'm speaking to, and so they probably right, right. want to get out and enjoy it. Today. All right. All right. Well, guys, we, we, we had a we had about 24 people on the call today. Thank you so much. You. Um, you know, this, this was just a wonderful gallery tour and talk. Thank you, Richard, Thank you. for Thank sharing you. your beautiful art Thank and thoughts. Yeah, excellent you. show. Thank yeah, you. yeah, Thank you. yeah. Thank you. Yeah, kudos, my friend. Have Thank you. Thank you. It's beautiful. Yeah, it was a Thank beautiful you. show. Nice. Right. And don't nice seeing you, Carolyn. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Don't forget yeah. when you go to his e-commerce page, you can get any of his pieces on acrylic, which is very beautiful. Mm -hmm. Right. This is just a, a sample of what the acrylic would look like. Right. And then also we have on canvas, of course, and wood. I'll show you the wood. Right, the wood it comes like this, and and again different sizes, very good quality, and also metal. Right, right, metal. Metal. Wow. Right, again different sizes depending on your pocket. So, um, any questions you can contact me. You can contact Richard. And um, thank you so much. So, guys, thank you, appreciate thank it. you. Thank you Carolyn. <laughs> thank you, Carolyn, for thank doing you. that. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Good yeah. health and happiness and continued yes. creative genius. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. Yay, Richard. Yeah. <laughs> well done. Well done. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Great show, Richard. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Carolyn. Thank you.